Thank you very much, <coughs> Madam Deputy Speaker. I beg to move that the bill be now read a second time. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the bill before the House today is a short bill with just four measures. An employer uh, national insurance contributions or NICS relief for employees in free ports, an employer NICS relief for employers of veterans, an exemption for test and trace support payments from self-employed NICS, and changes to the disclosure of tax avoidance schemes legislation with regard to national insurance contributions. These measures are all uh, important. Let me explain, if I may, each of them in more detail. I start with the employer NICS relief for employees in free ports. The budget, the Chancellor announced the locations of the first eight of our free ports. These sites, which range from Teesside to Tilbury, will become hubs for trade, innovation and commerce. They will attract new businesses and they will regenerate communities by creating jobs, boosting investment and spreading prosperity. Overall, free ports present an extraordinary opportunity for us to drive regional economic growth and the government want as many areas as possible to benefit. Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, an important part of the appeal of free ports for employers uh, is undoubtedly the wide range and variety of tax reliefs that they provide. These include an enhanced 10% rate of structures and buildings allowance, an increased 100% capital allowance for companies investing in plant and machinery, and full relief from stamp duty on land or property purchases. The employer NICS relief for workers in free ports contained in this bill encourages employment while also supporting regional growth. Under this measure, Employers with premises in a free port in Great Britain will be exempt from employer NICS on up to £25,000 of a new worker's wages. And this legislation applies to all new workers who spend 60% of their working time at a free port tax site in the first three years of employment. The relief will be available from April next year until at least April 2026. At that point, a sunset clause will require the government to lay secondary legislation to extend the relief, if it wishes, for up to a further five years to April 2031. Any decision to extend will only be taken upon review of the relief's impact. However, even if the government uh, decided not to extend the relief, employers will be able to claim it for the full three years on new hires taken on before April 2026. While these measures relate to Great Britain, let me assure the House that it is the government's intention to legislate for this relief in Northern Ireland as soon as it is practicable. Indeed, this bill provides the government with the power to set out the detail of the employer NICS relief in Northern Ireland in secondary legislation once engagement with the Northern Ireland executive is complete. Madam Deputy Speaker, I turn now to the second of our measures concerning NICS relief for employers of veterans. As colleagues will recall, this policy was announced at Spring Budget 2020. It, it also fulfils a manifesto commitment to reduce employer NICS for a full year for every new employee who has left the armed forces. The House will know well that I am uh, very uh, closely connected to um, uh, the astonishing work of Special Forces in Hereford, but it is true that the veterans of our armed forces across the United Kingdom give extraordinary service to this nation. We know that some face great challenges in obtaining secure and fulfilling employment. It is only right that we should do all we can to change this situation. Under this legislation, employers will not pay employer NICS on earnings worth up to £50,270 in a veteran's first full year of civilian employment. This amounts to a saving of up to £5,500 per hired veteran. I'm sure colleague will agree across the House that this measure should give a real boost to veterans' employment prospects and it should mean that many more businesses benefit from their often extraordinary skills and personal experience. I now turn to the exemption of test and trace support payments from self-employed NICS. Last September, the Government announced the launch of a £500 support payment in England for low-income individuals who had been told to self-isolate but who could not work from home and would lose income as a result. Shortly afterwards, the Scottish and Welsh governments announced similar schemes. These payments, which were provided 
by local authorities would be subject to employee and employer class 1 and 1A and self-employed class 2 and 4 NICs under long-standing legislation. Last year, however, the government introduced secondary legislation to exempt payments under the support schemes from employee and employer class 1 and 1A NICs. The, measures, uh, the measure contained in this bill will extend this exemption to the self-employed. It will ensure that these workers are treated consistently with their employed counterparts and do not have to pay NICs on support payments. The legislation will therefore retrospectively exempt test and trace support payments from Class 2 and Class 4 NICs for the 2020-21 tax year. It will also ensure that in future test and trace support payments will not be included in profits liable to Class 2 and Class 4 NICs. Madam Deputy Speaker, the final measure in this bill uh, is, uh, relates to changes in the disclosure of tax avoidance schemes regime for, in relation to NICs. As colleagues will recall, the DOTAS, as it's referred to, legislation was introduced in 2004. It seeks to provide HMRC with early information about new tax avoidance schemes, uh, information about how they work and about those who use them. The provisions in the Finance Bill of 2021 enhance the operation of the DOTAS regime, and this NICS bill includes changes to an existing regulation-making power in the Social Security Administration Act 1992. This will ensure that HMRC can act decisively over a wider range of promoters and their supply chains if they fail to provide information on suspected avoidance schemes. It will also ensure that HMRC can warn taxpayers about suspected avoidance schemes at an earlier stage than at present. In addition, the bill places responsibility for the obligations within DOTAS and for any failure to comply with them on both promoters of these schemes and their suppliers. I'm sure all colleagues across this House will welcome these measures. Madam Deputy Speaker, the bill supports regional growth and with it the government's levelling up agenda. It boosts employment while helping to protect those on low incomes from the financial impacts of COVID-19 and it strengthens the government's powers to tackle promoters of avoidance schemes. Uh, for all these reasons, I commend it to the House.